on episode 436 of Nintendo Switchcraft. Where are the December games? Ring Fit, First Thoughts, and Start Your Rokus. Those stories and more on this episode of Nintendo Switchcraft. Hello, look! Hey, listen! Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Switchcraft. Is it brought to you live every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday? You can tune in live by joining us over at twitch.tv slash run jump stomp. And this episode of Switchcraft is made possible by patrons like Joe A. Get Switchcraft and my other content ad free for as little as a dollar by joining the Patreon over at patreon.com slash run jump stomp. And um, also, if you would like to leave a voicemail, you can easily do that by uh, going to runjumpstomp.com slash voicemail from any device, and I may even play it on the show. Um, real quick, just a reminder, 143 Pixels Episode 3 comes out tomorrow. I don't actually remember which episode that is going to be, so if you haven't already followed me on Twitter, make sure that you do, uh, because I will post that. And you can also follow at Pixels143 uh, in order to find out what the next episode will be. Uh, we've already, uh, talked about Skyrim and now we've talked about Final Fantasy VIII. I'm not sure what's next, but I know that it was a fun conversation with an awesome person because that's what all of the episodes are. So thank you everybody who's already checked that out. And, uh, one last thing, if you are interested in Google Stadia at all tomorrow at 3 PM us Eastern, if I get my invite in time, uh, you will be able to watch me stream destiny Two on Google Stadia over at my uh, StadiaCast YouTube channel, youtube.com slash StadiaCast. I hope to see you over there. All right, let's talk Nintendo. Mario, Super Mario, Super Mario World. All right, let's talk Nintendo. I, I want to start by, by, I was wondering, actually, we were having a conversation before the show started uh, here in uh, the live chat at twitch.tv slash runjumpstomp, and um, somebody asked, what what games are coming out in December? Are are there any big releases in December, or is Nintendo hoping to kind of ride on the coattails of Luigi's Mansion Three and Pokemon Sword and Shield for the rest of the year? And I, you know, I kept thinking to myself, there's got to be something that's coming out in December. So I, I I searched a couple of websites and I finally I settled on. The one that was easiest to see the release dates for future games was Metacritic. So I, I went there and I was looking at the games that are coming out from now until the end of the year. So I'm, I'm not going to uh, spend too much time on this because there's not a whole lot that looks incredibly interesting to me. Uh, I will say this, November 19th, Munch, Munchkin Quacked, Quacked Quest... Uh, first off, I don't like trying to say the name because it makes me sound like an idiot, although I don't usually need too much help in that department. But uh, Munchkin is a fantastic uh, tabletop card game that I, I absolutely adore. And I am interested in how this uh, this game stacks up against that experience. It's a really, really fun uh, and hilarious experience to play that tabletop. I did not uh, get a review copy, and I wonder how much it is... Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go to Nintendo's website and see how much Munchkin, how much Munchkin, it sounds like the beginning of a, uh, um, uh, the beginning of a, uh, a rhyme that you're trying to do. Uh, it's $21 and 24 cents. It's on sale right now, down from $25. Uh, that's not much of a sale, but, uh, it's definitely something that I think I would like to check out. I, I did not request a review copy, so maybe I will look into trying to get my hands on one of those because I'm a fan of the the card game Munchkin. Uh, and uh, gosh, there's a bunch of games coming out before the end of the year. Don't think that I'm going to spend that much time on all of them. Uh, so scrolling through now, Bubble Bobble for Friends is coming out November 19th, but that is only in Europe, I believe. 
and it's not coming to the North American release until next year. However, keep in mind that um, uh, the Nintendo Switch is a region-free console. It's Nintendo's first home console that's region-free. So that means you can, if you have an account, load up uh, like a European account and buy Bubble Bobble for friends through there. That one looks really good. Uh, scrolling, and so I'm looking through the end of November, and uh, I'm really seeing nothing huge. Maybe Civ Six expansion. Maybe. I mean, not for me. I don't really care about that. Uh, but again, there's not a lot here that is jumping out at me. Now, if we go into December, um, in December, oh, well, actually, hold on here. Blaster Master Zero Two, Copen. Um, I did not even know about this. What what exactly is this? That sounds interesting. I'm a big fan of Blaster Master Zero. Uh, those games uh, th that I've played on the Nintendo Switch have been fantastic. And I did not know that we were getting another one. So that's good to know, but there's no information on it. I will have to look up more information on that later. Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition. Now, if you are a fan of top-down uh, uh, CRPGs, you are going to like Neverwinter Nights a lot. I don't know if the controls will work great because that was originally a, a mouse and keyboard kind of game. Um, I assume that they've got that problem solved and it's not going to be an issue for most people, but Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition, that comes out December 3rd. And then, um, I mean, for me, I, again, I don't really care about this, but Farming Simulator 2020, I, I guess that the farming simulator games have like huge, huge followings and people are going to be very excited to be able to play that on Nintendo Switch. Um, and then we've got two games here, Riverbond, which I already have. Uh, I can't really talk about it because it's under embargo right now, but I've already been playing that. I think that's going to be a, a pretty popular game. And then Shovel Knight King of Cards, I don't have to buy that because I'm already going to be getting that uh, free as part of m me having the Treasure Trove edition. Uh, so, so that's good. But then I look at the rest of December and it's just empty. There's, there's like nothing there. And it really, really surprises me. And we were talking about it, like I said, in, in, in a discord chat before, and somebody said, you know, it would be a really good idea if Nintendo would have taken, uh, Link's Awakening, which was, a massive success for Nintendo. It's a wonderful game. I listen. If you've been, if you've played, if you've paid attention to my show for any length of time, you know that there's something that I do not do. I do not finish games. The next shiny thing comes along and distracts me, and uh, I finished that game. I had so much fun playing Link's Awakening. That game is is fantastic and awesome. And if you haven't picked it up yet, you absolutely should. But it came in the middle of September, and there was so much stuff to play in September that I think that Nintendo would have been better off putting that as a December release. In fact, when they first unveiled it, I I had guessed that that was going to be the December tentpole release. And for some reason, they brought it out in September in this really, really crowded area. It was completely crowded. There were so many games to play. To, I'm sorry, to play. And in, in instead of moving Zelda out of the way, it just, you know, they sold it in September. And I bet you that many games in, in uh, September, their sales were probably hurt by having Zelda right there in the mid middle of it. And if Nintendo had pushed that to be a December game instead, I feel like everything would have been a little bit more balanced out over the long run. And uh, that's that's just how I feel about it, though. So uh, let me know if there's any games that are coming out in December that you are looking forward to. And if you want to see the full list, you can go to my website, runjumpstomp.com. And once you're there, look for episode 436 of Nintendo Switchcraft so that you can find out more about it. All right, let's move on. If you're going to spend your time playing video games, why not play them on something that can also teach you about computing? Get a Commodore 64 or VIC-20. All right, um, I want to talk about Ring Fit Adventure. I had a minor 
surgery earlier uh, this year, and it came out like Ring Fit Adventure came out the day after my minor surgery. So I was told not to use it. Uh, I had to wait and to do any kind of exercise for a couple of weeks. And once I started working out again, I was get, getting on my bike and, you know, lifting my weights. And I kept looking at Ring Fit Adventure and I kept saying, ah, I'm going to play it another day. I'm going to try it another day. I kept putting it off and putting it off. And I want to talk about the reason why I kept putting it off. The first off, the, the, the first reason that I kept putting it off is because the place where I would end up playing is in here. This is where I feel like I have the most room and this really isn't a room that has a lot of room, but I feel like this is where the most room is and I would be disrupting the rest of everybody else's day the least by doing it in here. So I wanted to play it in here, but what you might not know, you can't tell from looking at at, uh, at the screen here, is that this is up on the second floor. And, you know, playing Ring Fit Adventure, you're running in place. And running in place on the second floor, you know, that, that kind of thing would, you know, it might shake the house. And I definitely didn't want to shake the house or make a lot of noise. So I was, I kept thinking, I don't know. Now, the game has a silent mode where instead of running in place, you just kind of squat in place uh, kind of quickly. And now I don't like the way that you do it. I wish that it was more kind of uh, shuffling back and forth instead of just squatting up and down really quickly. And uh, I'll talk about that in a little bit. But I kept thinking to myself, there's no way that the silent mode is going to give me as good of a workout as the running in place mode. So I kept putting it off because I was like, well, I want to get a good workout today. Plus, I've been watching um, the morning show on Apple TV, and I I love that show. I think that show is fantastic. And uh, it's, you know, when I have the choice to hop on the bike and watch the morning show while I'm riding my bike, you know, I would prefer to do that than trying to play Ring Fit Adventure. So a long story short, yesterday... I decided to try Ring Fit Adventure. I got up, got ready to, to do my morning workout, and I, I walked in here, and it's been hanging up there on the wall, like basically hanging from one of my curtain rods up on the wall. And I saw it up there, and I was like, you know what, let me try that today instead. So I went downstairs, and I got the cartridge from my son. He tried it, and he said it was okay, but it, it didn't really get his attention, so he moved on uh, to play other stuff. Uh, but I brought the cartridge up and I decided to try it out and I put it in silent mode. And my initial experience is first off, Nintendo, you've got to let us skip the cutscenes. I wanted to get, I wanted to keep my heart rate up. I wanted to keep going. I wanted to get real sweaty, at which eventually I did, but it took a really long time because of these stupid cutscenes that I don't care about the story, even a little, like not even, I, I, I was just so irritated every time there was a cutscene and I couldn't skip the cutscene and I hated that. So I was like, all right, this is really frustrating and um, not particularly fun because I would have like two minutes of exercise interrupted with two to three minutes of cutscene. Now, of course, this is the very beginning of the game, so I can understand that, but let me skip the cutscene if I want. You know, tell me the most important information and then shut up and get out of my way because this is not a game that you play for the story. And I appreciate that somebody had to go through the time and effort to make a story for the game, and they want me to see said story for the game, but overall... I found it to just be irritating that it wouldn't let me just move on and play the game that I want. That just just play the game. I just wanted to play the game. So, you know, finally I got past a lot of that, and um, I had to fight the Mr. Dragon Man, which if you're watching this over on the YouTube channel, you can see him on the screen right now. I had to fight against that thing, and it was cool, but I have to say the silent mode means that I did probably... I don't know, 3,000 squats yesterday. 
so I can hardly move because it was just so many squats. And I don't think that I would be having, and listen, I do a lot of bicycle work. I'm on that bicycle probably every other day. And if I'm really enjoying whatever it is that I'm uh, watching, then maybe every day I'm on the bike because it gives me an excuse to throw my headphones on and watch something while I pedal away. So it's not like my legs are out of shape. My legs are in pretty good shape. Doing that many squats, though, I was just like this morning, I was I'm I felt like I was going to die. Every time I would take a step down the stairs, I thought that my knee was just going to keep going forward and I was going to take a tumble uh, because I did so many squats yesterday. In addition to squatting in place to do the silent mode running, you also have to do squats to attack. And then you also have to do chair, like this chair sit where you um, hold yourself in a chair position without a chair, of course, and like do a yoga pose, which is, you know, it's good exercise. But I felt like all of the exercises were the same thing over and over and over instead of varying it. Like three of the things that I was doing were, were all squat related workout stuff. And while I, I can definitely see how this can keep people engaged. Um, I think that they could have done much better with, okay, let's make sure that we do it multiple ways. Cause, cause I did, I think there were four exercise, the squatting to run and then squatting to run faster to go up the stairs, uh, squats, the chair set, all of those are all squat stuff, uh, sitting on the floor and doing like leg raises, which is kind of like, uh, almost like a sit up kind of, which actually I, 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 I'd never done that before. Um, and I, I prefer that to doing sit ups without a doubt. I would prefer honestly to do planks. I don't know how they can check if you're doing planks. Okay. With the joy cons. And then, uh, one thing where you have to hold the the ring over your head and squeeze it back and forth. Uh, so those were the exercises that I did. And of those, all of almost all of them were squat related. And it just seems very one sided. So uh, I'm, I'm going to give it another shot, but I need to take a, a day off because my legs are just jello right now, which is a good thing. But I would prefer if I was, you know, feeling the burn in more than just one location because it felt like everything was focused on one area and then I felt like it was just too much and I'm not sure if that's because that's the easiest for them to to measure now I I was sweating after a while I was uh you know it, it was enjoyable uh but there was there were times where I was like if I have to do another squat I'm going to throw this thing out the window and and of course they gave me more squats, but you know, I didn't want to throw my switch out the window. So that's, uh, my first experience with ring fit adventure. I think it's cool. Oh, um, the heart rate thing, you, you put your, th your thumb on the heart rate thing in order or on the, on the right joy con it, on the very bottom, it has the, um, the IR sensor. And when you're working out, you can put your thumb over top of that sensor and it will tell you what your heart rate is. And I was very curious because for those of you who watch the show, I have an Apple watch and that tells me my heart rate when I'm working out. And it was like, like the, the switch version and my watch version, they matched up really, really well. Uh, I think it was within one beat per minute of each other, which was very impressive that this can do that. I, I just think that what Nintendo does with their hardware is so absolutely clever that I just sometimes you just can't you, you just can't believe uh, the kind of stuff that they figure out. All right. I talked about that for a while. I didn't realize how long I was going to go for. So we're going to take a break uh, on the audio show. You're going to hear from a sponsor. And then when we get back, I've got to I'm going to tell you how to get certain Pokemon. Stick around. Hey, Paisanos, it's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. All right, we are back, and uh, I want to tell you about this um, dates for weather. Uh, if you did not know, I guess in Pokemon Sword and Shield, which I have not played yet, 
different Pokemon will spawn depending on which uh, current weather is happening in the game. And one of the things that uh, people, of course, people figured it out is that it's based on the date. So if you want to figure out, or I'm sorry, if you want to cat capture certain Pokemon, you can set your, uh, you can change the date on your Nintendo Switch. And that's going to tell you how you're going to find certain weather. So if you're looking for sunny days, uh, set the date of your Nintendo Switch to May 1st, 2020. If you're looking for overcast days, set it to March 1st, 2020. If you want rain, October 1st, 2020. If you want a thunderstorm, then November 1st, 2020. If you want snow, December 1st. If you want blur blowing snow, I guess. I'm not sure what that means. That would be February 1st. And then it looks like sunny with a dot in the middle. I don't know what that means. Uh, it would be July 1st. And then it looks like maybe hail is April 1st, 2020. And then uh, on June 1st, 2020... You get like a cloud with like weird dashes in it. And I don't know what that means, but that is end game locked. So maybe you have to be at end game in order to take advantage of that. Overall, I, I'm not sure what this is going to do to your particular save. And here's what I mean. Okay, how do I? Okay, first I want to say how I feel about this. If you want to manipulate your your switch in order to capture the Pokemon that you want, I have absolutely no problem with that. I know that there's going to be people out there who look at this as cheating, but it doesn't increase your chances of winning when you play against other people. It just lets you co collect the Pokemon easier. So if this is something that you want to do, I don't think of that as cheating. I think it's just like, okay, whatever. I don't know if Nintendo pays attention to you changing the date of your system or not. This is something that, like, if you played Animal Crossing on the 3DS and you change the date of your system, like, there would be this dude, uh, Rosetti, who would call you a cheater and, like, admonish you for it. Uh, I don't know if Nintendo is going to do anything about this. I think it's interesting. I, I would have preferred that instead they just have the weather be randomized with certain weather to be more likely to happen in certain parts of the year. But I, I don't know why they decided to go with certain days. I mean, I think that that would be better. I don't think of this as cheating, and I'm curious how, how you all feel. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can let me know in the comment section down below, or you can get a hold of me on Twitter at RunJumpStomp. Um, make sure you use the hashtag Nintendo Switchcraft because I get a lot of tweets about my other shows as well. But do you think this is cheating? If so, let me know. If not, let me know as well. All right, real quick, this was very interesting. There's some kind of interaction between... Pokemon Sword and Shield and Roku devices. And <laughs> uh, basically what was happening is people would be playing Pokemon Sword and Shield and it would cause their Roku device to get stuck in a boot state. It wouldn't be able to boot. And people were like, what in the hell is happening? Why is this happening? Well, it has since been resolved uh, this is uh, posted over at Roku's website, support.roku.com. Uh, it says, we are aware of an issue when using Nintendo Switch and the latest Pokemon game impacting a limited number of Roku devices. We are rolling out a software update to resolve it, and impacted users can check for the updates by going to Settings, System, Software Update. If your Roku device is not currently stuck in a boot state, boot state, perform a software update by doing the following using the Roku remote. And they tell you how. After the software is installed and the device is restarted, you should have recovered normal functionality and the updated to these, excuse me, versions depending on your model number. If your device is currently 
stuck in a boot state, do the following before the steps above. Turn off your Nintendo Switch or place it into airplane mode and then restart the Roku. And then after that, you go back to the other things. So I like I don't understand why this is something that happens. It might be something to do with the Nintendo Switch is p- trying to broadcast to other nearby Switches. And it's being, uh, you know, like, it, like the Roku is, is responding to that in some way. And then it's not like the Nintendo has some, or, or Game Freak has somehow found a zero day e- exploit with Roku devices. I think this is hilarious. But if I were like, if I were trying to watch something and like my son was playing Pokemon and it kept rebooting my, my device, I, I would never have occurred to me that it has anything to do with the Nintendo Switch that never would have occurred to me at all. So I don't know what I would have done, especially if I'm, if I'm not somebody who pays attention to Nintendo news, I don't know how I would have found out about it. Uh, I would have just been furious and not been able to figure it out. And it would have just kept happening until Roku automatically updated. I, I like I'm really I, I'm at a loss as to how something like this happens, but hey, man, it's weird. And look, don't blame just Nintendo. It's also Roku. Uh clearly both of them did something wrong because this kind of thing shouldn't happen. All right. Uh I think that that's gonna be it for today. I had a uh, another thing that I wanted to talk about, but I don't want to uh make the episode too long. So uh, thank you all for being being here. If you want to join the Discord, you absolutely should. There's a there's hundreds of people over there just waiting to talk to you about video games. Go join the Discord at runjumpstomp.com slash Discord. You can also watch the show live at twitch.tv slash runjumpstomp, and you can get a hold of me in the ways that I mentioned earlier. This show is part of the giant-sized Team Up Network. If you want to check out the other shows uh, that are part of our network, you absolutely should by heading on over to GSTU. Dot net. And if you want to support the show, go to runjumpstomp.com slash thank you and uh, listen. Uh, listen, the music you're hearing right now is Cornaria Star Fox remixed by Noteblock. It's awesome and you're awesome. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>